Today I'm going to be fishing in the White River in Arkansas with one of the best guides around here by, by the name of John Gully. We're going to be fishing for rainbows and brown trout and I'm going to be fishing barefoot. If you want to know why, come back and watch. That was awesome. Extremely strong fish. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish. Good fish. Yeah. Yeah, we talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got an example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat. Sweet music. Sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. Today's show, the New Fly Fisher crew, is on the White River in northern Arkansas. This awesome tailwater fishery is regulated catch and release and restricted to barbless hooks. The largest population of fish in the river are rainbow trout, with fish in the two to five pound range being the norm. But the White River also has a reputation for producing huge brown trout. Some as big as 40 pounds have been caught and experts believe it's just a matter of time before a 50 pound specimen is taken. Most of the rainbow trout are stocked with the vast number of brown trout being wild. But don't be surprised if you take a smallmouth or largemouth bass as they're also quite plentiful in the river. <laughs> Joining us today is John Gully, a guide with 30 years experience in fresh and salt water. He was awarded the prestigious guide of the year in 1998 and in 2003, he was awarded the Arkansas Wildlife Federation Water Conservation Award. John's expertise and friendly down-to-earth nature will make this a fun trip. We're in an area that is artificial single hook, barbless only. And that means one hook. It doesn't mean you can't have two flies as long as one doesn't have a hook in it. So I use an egg pattern, a fake egg with no hook in it. And I just tie a double overhand knot here and slip the yarn through it and cinch it down. That cushions that knot too. Then I just trim it off on each side and I've got an egg. Then I put whatever fly I want to below that egg. And sometimes it helps, sometimes it, but I'm just gonna snip that on each side after I twist it a little bit and roll it around in my fingers and it'll make a little ball like an egg pattern with no hook in it. So that's how you get by with two flies and no, when you're fishing deep like this anyway. And then we just roll that and it makes a little ball, just like an egg. And then down below here, we'll put another San Juan worm or, or could even put another egg pattern. Um, we'll put another San Juan on there. Getting a little cloud cover today, so that might mean I need a little brighter stuff here. And we're just gonna put it on with a improved clinch knot, which is a fisherman's knot, whatever you wanna call it. This is 3x tip, but it's 8.2 pound. And just stick it on there. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. <laughs> and then we're going to get the barb down on this hook and we're ready to roll. These hooks are so high tempered that sometimes when you go to mash the barb, it, you hear that click. It actually breaks instead of mashes, so you have to kind of roll it around in your pliers a little bit to get it, get it where it'll pass through uh, material like that, and you're okay. Okay, here we go. 
I put the split shot above all that, and I put a little knot below the split shot so that it doesn't slip down on you. That doesn't mean it won't slip up, but it doesn't slip down. So, and then right below that, I, I tie in some egg yarn and with a double overhand knot and just slip the egg yarn through the, the, uh, the double overhand and cinch it down and then trim it off on both sides and roll it in your fingers and you get a little egg pattern there with no hook in it. And then about 18 to 20 inches below that I put the fly, which today we're putting San Juan worms below that about oh, 18 inches and mash the barb down so that you know we're, we can fish our barbless trophy area up here. And uh, because it's single hook barbless, it means you cannot have two flies with two hooks. You can have one fly with one hook. So we use the little fake egg for a second fly with no hook in it. And that's kind of what we're doing here. And we're fishing about 10 feet deep with a large indicator. If it goes down, we're just setting the hook and hanging on. So we're ready to roll when you are. As long as you're away from the boat and you tighten it up, you know, strip it till you move the indicator, yep. it'll come out pretty easily. So you want to be about 20 feet off the end of your rod tip to that indicator or more. And as soon as it hits the water, you want to put a big mend in it, and we'll just be drifting along with it. Of course, faster than we are now since the motor's dead, but um, I'll be keeping up with that indicator. If, if your indicator goes down, if you get a strike, you want to set across your body short and quick, like kind of like this. Bam. You know, a quick, short, sharp set and then stop. Yep. Uh, if you do anything else besides that, you'll either break the fish off or pull it out of his mouth. Yep. And the reason I tell people to go this way is because cool. the shoulder will stop you. Stop you, yeah. You don't go too far. And plus, the fly never comes out of the water that way and hits somebody, you especially, yourself. <laughs> because it, That's why we're but it's just boop, like that, and stop. You get the fish on, you keep the rod high and, and strip if you need to or reel if you need to and let him have line when he takes it. Some of these fish can be large, some may be small, but it depends on the day. So if you happen to hook a good fish, you better let him run. That's 3X tippet, but they can still break it. It's, it's eight pound tippet, but doesn't mean, you, you know, a good fish won't break it if you don't let him go. So, um, Ian, I'm gonna let you come back here. The White River has obtained an incredible reputation as a tailwater fishery over the past dozen years. This incredibly fertile watershed supports a wide variety of cold water and warm water species. Nymphing is considered the primary means of catching fish on this system because of the diversity of forage available underwater. From scuds to mayfly nymphs, there is a veritable smorgasbord of food available for the trout in the White River. They're, they're just so full of food. But this is actually a stock fish. With the water moving at 12 miles per hour, it's important to make each cast count as your window of opportunity is short. By going barefoot in the boat, this allows you to feel the line if you happen to step on it, thus reducing the chance of losing that fish of a lifetime. One of the first things John Gully told me when I got on the boat was, take off your shoes. The reason being, he didn't want me standing on the fly line. If you have bare feet, you can feel the line underneath your feet, and you can easily get out of the way of it before you cast. As he said, it's awfully difficult to cast that extra foot. A number five or six weight rod is recommended with a floating line to match. 10 foot leaders with fluorocarbon tippets of 3X are also needed. Lighter rods are not recommended due to the fact that there is very large fish in this river and you want to safely fight the fish in quickly, thus ensuring its survival. While there's a wide variety of flies that are used on the White River, the two main flies that we use on today's show are the San Juan worm and the yarn egg pattern. I get to concentrating so much on this that I don't hear the boats going by. There we go. There we go, fish on. Whoa, out of the water. 
It's a little one, but he's fighting good. Still don't have my big one I'm looking for. Yeah, he's a jumper. Nice little stalker, I guess. I think I got this one. There we go, quick release. All right. Tell me what you're going to do again. We're going to throw right in behind that snag against the, put your fly right on the edge of the grass that's under the water, the green stuff, <laughs> and just let her drip. A brown trout. No. No, silver. Rainbow. Rainbow. Try to get them on the reel as quick as I can. Nice little rainbow. Once again, he told me just to throw the fly along the edge of the grass and the submerged grass. I did that. Go tap, tap, boom. There's the proof. Gotta love it. Pretty cool. Male rainbow. Oh. Good job, guy. All right. Out of here. But you're right, though. As soon as that line gets below the, the, the strike indicator, yeah, it's hard to get the it's, that's it. It's all over. Get that drag off of it totally. There we go. Nice, pretty rainbow. Most rainbows caught are in the 15 to 18 inch area, but rainbows of up to 19 pounds have also been taken. Although in lower numbers, cutthroat and brookies are other species found in the White River. This is truly a great fishery. Nice rainbow. I don't know, but... Wise fly fishers experiment with their rigging depth and weight system to find the right combination that will help keep your fly near the bottom. It is critical that your fly is in that zone in order to catch lots of fish. Finally got a little pressure on him. Yeah, cutthroat, isn't it? A little cutthroat, how about that? Yeah. Big fish. Whoa, fish on. Fish on. Woo! This is exciting. Life and death situations and hooking rainbows. You gotta love it. On a big egg fly. You got it? But when you have that low hanging fog, it's, a, it's an indication that the weather's changing and you're getting a low pressure front in here. So it's like, like you know, ahead of a front when the bass eat better and, and so forth. So it, that's when our bigger fish sometimes turn on in this river. You'll be going along on a bright sunny day and we got another one right there. Oops, we had another one. Um, bright sunny day and not catching many fish and, and then all of a sudden the weather changes a little bit and bam, they start hitting. Um, we don't ever not catch fish on this river. It's, this, these rivers are so full of fish that you're going to catch some fish, but the bigger fish tend to hit when it's like a low pressure or cloud cover or get rid of some of that sunlight. So um, it's a change in the weather pattern that causes that. So 
We're going to go back up right here and see if we can get a hold of another one. Well, here we are. Um, we've made about 30 drifts. Our guides told us this is a slow day, and it's, in my opinion, it's not. But I don't know the river. He's just telling it like it is. We're using Stay that hard. using that great system that he showed me. And the one thing you got to do is really stay on them hard. As it was just told, perfect. Take you think you might have done this one or two times? Idea. Yep. to get a fish like that. Oh, wow. wow. And the fly came straight out. Isn't that pretty? Wow. Isn't that something else? That's beautiful. On a little tiny San Juan worm in really fast water. Unbelievable. We're gonna, we have to put him back as catch and release area. But look at how fat he is. He's a porker. An absolute porker of a rainbow. Just gorgeous. Look at the colors. Fantastic stuff. Boy, this is one trip you gotta do. We'll let him go. As in most nymphing, it is imperative that you present your nymph drag-free and near the bottom in order to enhance your chances for success. No matter what the depth of water in most rivers, trout will usually be at the bottom of the water column, near the bottom. This is to facilitate access to drifting nymphs, scuds, and other food, but also to minimize exposure to overhead predators such as eagles and osprey. Oh. Okay, we got down where they live, guys. We got on the bottom and finally, uh, Got something that wasn't had didn't have too much sway to it, and this is a nice little rainbow that looks like a wild fish. We have some wild fish in the river, and uh, this guy is not uh, too happy about it, He's trying to go under my boat. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna get him up here where we can look at him and try to get him back into the river here. You have to get down on the bottom. Oops. That's a quick release. I didn't have to do anything, didn't have to touch him. I like those kinds, so we'll go back out and get his older cousin. Whoop! There's a fishy. Long, quick strips in. All right, let's get him in the boat. You want to land him over here with the net? Oh, I think so. Just kind of slide him up high and back and just arc that rod straight back. Oops, come here, fishy. There we go. Woo. Nice little bow, but uh, he's got some bigger cousins in here somewhere. Stockfish, fin clip. See that? It's not a wild fish, he's stock. Kiss him. There you go. I don't know if you can see the water behind me, but it's pretty daunting stuff. And we're going to be fishing this. That's why you need a guide. I have the complete confidence in John behind me, or I'm going swimming, and I don't want to go in here. It's chilly, and it's 12 miles an hour. When using strike indicators and nymph rigs in water that has varying velocity changes, it is important to constantly be mending your fly line to compensate for drag. 
even the slightest amount of drag will signal to feeding fish that there's something wrong with your offering, and as such, they'll refuse it. Both upstream and downstream mends need to be made to facilitate the changing currents. Concentrate on your drift and make consistent mending changes to ensure your fly is presented properly to the fish. Man, this is tough fishing. You don't want to have a hard condition doing this stuff. This is a wild fish. You can see his fins. Not a very big fish, but all the same, really, really pretty. Tough fishing, but all the same, well worth it. <laughs> Just as I made the man. This is a better fish. Oh, little rainbow. Be a little rainbow. Get out of there, get out of there, you rascal. Nice little rainbow. Splashy, splashy. Today I just finished fishing with John Gully, one of the best drift boat guides on the White River here in Arkansas. We got a bunch of rainbows, missed a couple of browns, we even got a cutthroat trout. The system that John showed me worked, it'll work for you. Whether you want to try it barefoot in the middle of Alaska in the winter time, that's your call. All the same, it worked. Tune in again the next time and you might pick up a few more pointers that'll catch fish for you. Bye now. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads. The new Fly Fisher is made possible thanks to the Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, Scientific Anglers, Mastering the sport with science. Islander Precision Reels.